Welcome to week three of our course. Uh, this is the week we're going to start working on content, something everyone's been waiting for. Uh, and we are going to start developing one very specific piece of content. We're going to work this week on designing or finding a small activity that will become like your business card. It will be something that you will be able to do on, on the fly at the beginning of a math circle or whenever you have children, parents around you and they're wondering what is math circle all about and should they join or not. So why is this business card, so-called business card activity, so important? Well, uh, there are some immediate benefits for people and for, for yourself and some long term. Well, for a person, it's a little taste of uh, what a circle is. Think of it as a microscopic circle, but it's also a little gift. It's something pleasant, beautiful, fun that you do for the person. You share the love, uh, the love of mathematics, the love of uh, beauty. And uh, you, so, uh, a lot of, uh, I guess, businesses or a lot of establishments have little gifts for when they first meet people. It makes a difference. It establishes a relationship and it establishes for the person uh, some sort of connection to what you are all about. And that brings me to why it's important for you. Um, this is almost like a mantra on which you meditate again and again. You build more senses out of this simple activity, you come back to it and think about it deeper and deeper and it grows on you. It uh, builds connections, mathematical and personal, and so it puts you in a mood of mathematics. It's a good start. So for a new person, it's a good introduction and start of a relationship with mathematics, with your mathematics. For yourself, it's a way of keying yourself onto this um, mode of working with mathematics with this person. So I guess I'm going to share mine now, right? So, uh, so this is a little object that I made and I made it with duct tape. It's made of two mirrors, so I call it mirror book. Um, I think I read about it somewhere. I, that definitely didn't invent it, but I know many people have reinvented those things. So why this is my signature? It's a very simple object, it's easy to make, it's accessible. At the same time, it has a lot of rich uh, ideas kind of hiding in it, and you give it to a child, everything just kaleidoscopes out. So much beauty, so much fun. Uh, a lot of meaning. It's very open. You can take it places. You can do multiplication tables with it, or you can do calculus with it. You can find infinity in it. So uh, it really represents to me a lot of meanings from natural math that I built on top of this object, I guess. So, uh, Elena, what is your signature object or activity? I like doing origami and um, I find that origami well, is usually my little activity. I bring it everywhere we go. Uh, for one, I'm yet to find a child who says, no, I don't want to try it. Adults sometimes say that they can get intimidated, but children are very fearless, and even the youngest, the ones that can barely fold paper, uh, they're usually very eager to try to make something beautiful. Um, another reason I like it is because, well, it's very portable, um, very inexpensive. It, gives people something to keep, something to take, uh, like what Maria was saying, a little, a little gift from us. And another reason is when people ask me what is it that we do in math circles, what our math is all about, I tell them all sorts of stories, but ultimately those are my stories. But when they do a little bit of origami with me, this becomes 
their story. Now they have a bit of math, different math experience, and they seem to like that. Um, doesn't have to be anything major like this big uh, Sierpinski pyramid, although each a little element only takes a few seconds to fold, and it's it's very simple. But it can be like butterflies. Um, if you have more patient crowd, it can be something like this, modular origami. Um, another thing that I like doing is a little puzzle where I would take a strip of well, two strips of paper and I would uh, fold one and just you know tape it into a cylinder. And another one I would uh, give it a twist and uh, turn it into a Möbius strip. And then I would take the scissors and I would say, hey, what do you think will happen when I cut the cylinder uh, like this? And usually uh, everyone says, oh, well, it will fall into two. You will have two cylinders. I'm like, okay, well, that's great. And we test, and that's what happens. And then I say, well, uh, how about this one? What's going to happen to it? Uh, when I do the same thing, and people say, oh, well, the same thing is going to happen, especially children and adults, they kind of expect some kind of trickery here, but children, uh, they say, well, that's what's going to happen. You're going to end up with two of these. And, of course, I don't end up with two of these. And uh, when I repeat repeat this with a regular cylinder, I just get a bunch of skinnier and skinnier, skinnier cylinders, but with a nervous strip, when I repeat things, I get something like this, a shredded tangle of strips. And uh, this one, um, well, children like to repeat it, or at least try. Uh, they take it home. Uh, but another uh, reason I like this one, unlike origami, they have this wonderment in, in their faces. Why is it happening? How come this works differently? And so I say, aha, what a good question. Why don't we think about it and explore it further? And that's like a hook, and we can start uh, further exploration of math with that.